I asked Arctic to send over fans, and they sent over a special needs dog. This is Arctic's P12 fan, one of the most known and community beloved fans out there. It spins at 1800 RPM, pushes about 56.3 CFM at 2.2 mm of H2O. But the most important aspect about it is that it is dirt cheap. And this here is Arctic's S4028-15, a 40 mm fan capable of spinning at up to 15 thousand rpm. While doing so it pushes 19.23 CFM at get this 26 and a half millimeters of H2O. So this is one hell of a little monster but it pushes just minimal minimal air. For the most part these things are designed to be replacement fans for things like switches, routers, one u servers, network attached storages, everything that uses very very small fans. And we actually have a use case for this. Take our Dell PowerEdge R510. It's our storage server essentially. It got two Xeons and at some point we replaced the original like Dynamatron, I have no clue what, no, Delta. Delta, I don't know what fans, with a couple of Nokia A6s, not because we don't need the cooling power, but because the original fans were hella loud. And of course, this thing is now also a bit louder, but that's really nothing that we cannot solve with a bunch of those Noctia low noise adapters. You see, there are use cases for those. Now, at this point, a huge thank you to Arctic, because they sent over a whole bucket load of those S4028 fans. Oh my god, that's a lot. And now here comes the point of this video. This is an Arctic P12. It is used in a variety of use cases, most known for their liquid cooler lineup, the liquid freezer 120, 240, and so on. And the point is, this is 40 millimeters. And fans are not calculated by blade size, they are calculated by frame size. So if we take two of them, we now have 40 times 80. So this is now 80 times 80. And if your baby fontanel hadn't been used to stash crack cocaine while your house is being raided, you would know that this is 120 times 120. This is going to be fun. Now one little thing about this fan, Arctic does give a noise level for every fan they offer, except for those. And yeah, not giving a noise level is... that's... <laughs> This is one hell of a chunk. Rinse and repeat three times and we got ourselves a triple set of Arctic S4028 fans. This is going to be amazing. Did something fall off here? Triple pack of Arctic S4028 15,000 RPM fans. And naturally with all of these I did exactly what you expected me to do. Every single of the, these fans is pushing about half an amp. You will fry a, a regular PVM header after six. So uh, everything is bundled together using, I think, like five different controllers. I have no idea what will happen.
After allowing the little lawnmowers to do whatever the heck they wanted to and confirming the police with three independent calls that indeed everything is okay over here, at 31 degrees C above ambient they beat the crap out of every freaking thing. Over on the Noise to Performance chart we can see that this was indeed a very stupid idea creating a very flat out line. Now I didn't anticipate them to create a, a very flat line, the problem is that somewhere in between fan 2 and fan 23 something went wrong with the PVM signal meaning that no matter what I did it was just spinning at 100% and I also tried to put like a a uh, Noctua no low noise adapter in between resulting in absolutely nothing. Like, it completely ignored my motherboard signal no matter what I did. So, uh, yeah, maybe it was controller 1, maybe it was controller 2, 3, maybe it was one of the broken PVM splitters, I have no clue. But it resulted in this flat out line which yelled at like 86 dB. It was hella freaking loud. So, if you are willing to sacrifice your hearing for the absolute best performance available, well this 120mm Arctic S4028 is the best fan you can get. But if you like stupid ideas, I, I am not done with this. This here is an AMD 7950X and this here is an Arctic Liquid Freezer 120 and if you believe the general consensus on basically every forum available, you should never use 120mm radiators because they suck. Yeah, they are not very very good and going for a 240 gives you a lot more performance. To have some sort of a baseline, I first installed the regular P12, basically just having a very regular Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 120 and let the 7950X on stock on everything. On the idle it hits like 65 degrees C, somewhere in that range, 62 sometimes, it's, uh, it's a very good combination. And once we hit stress test on CPU-Z and let the fan spin at 100% and the pump of course also, we can see that the CPU basically throttles itself instantly. I mean, we are starting off at 202 watts and now you can slowly see how that number just goes down and down and down before the CPU reaches that 95 degrees C or it hovers around it. And this will take a couple of minutes but at some point it will reach 92, 93, somewhat in that range and we will be sitting at like 190 watts uh, before everything just stagnates. That being said, we are hitting a bit less than 5.2 GHz on the first 8 cores and then a bit less than 5.1 on the last 8. And I'm pretty sure that the number will go down if we wait long enough. Let's stop this madness. Nobody should use a P12 and a 120mm AIO setup with a CPU like this. This on the other hand, this makes sense. This like, makes a lot of freaking sense. Yet the holes will never align. Like okay, 40 millimeters is not exactly 40 millimeters. It's 40 point something. And with three fans stacked right next to each other, at some point we are beyond the 120 millimeter hole. Uh, which is annoying, but that's nothing that a good old zip tie cannot fix. Voila! Of course I will not just kill my PVM port on my motherboard, therefore we have two controllers, because one is not enough. <laughs> okay, this is a bit louder than I anticipated. Let's see what happens. Eighty nine point three, that's And it's not throttling down, it's higher! This works! <laughs> yeah, let's...
That really does not sound very good. Oh, this one is still. Oh my god, was that loud. So, okay, okay. In the end, we turned out to be at like 89.4 degrees C, which is very respectable given the 94.4 maximum that I achieved during a, a P12 like 30 minutes test. So in the end it turned out that this produced 89.4 degrees C without thermal throttling the CPU to a degree as the regular P12 did, which is very very cool. A stack of 9 S4028 achieved 5 degrees C better results than a P12, which is amazing. And I'm yelling because I, I, I still can't hear anything. <laughs> Who said 120mm AIOs are not capable of handling high TDP chips? Of course they are! You just need to work a bit on them. <laughs> it's being pulled over! <laughs> God, all of this loud. These things are freaking monsters. These little monsters are very, very useful, but not for you and me. Sure, it was really cool to see how they pushed down the temps of a 7950X on top of a, or below a Arctic Liquid Freezer 360, a couple of degrees. That was really cool. But the most interesting part was that these suckers were able to keep a 7950X from thermal throttling using a 120mm AIO, which is really, really cool. However, as you've seen during recording, these suckers are so freaking loud, forget about it. Additionally, those suckers are pulling 0.47 amps, which means that you would need a whole bunch of controllers, such as these suckers here, and we will get to them in a minute, just to have them running. Do not use PVM splitters. I use one, two, three, four, five, plus the Arctic one, six of these suckers. And the problem is that they are pulling 0.47 amps, which sounds very, very fine. Every port can push that amount. However, what I kind of forgot before recording all of this is that each controller also has a maximum amount of power that can go through it. And add 10 of them, and then add another two splitters, and we are already at like 6 amps. And yeah, this one is dead, this one is dead, the Be Quiet one is dead, the Arctic one is dead, and I think this one still works, but uh, yeah, you get the point. I killed half of my freaking controllers. Um, that wasn't <laughs> the very best idea. Uh, you maybe even saw in during recording that, that some of the fans were just stopping to spin because the controller died uh -oh. during the benchmark, which is so freaking stupid, but hey, I mean, you do it for science. So yeah, these suckers have real use cases in servers, in switches, you know, that kind of stuff. But don't use more than one on a single header, or you will just fry something. However, before we end this, there is something else really, really cool about this. Check this out. It hovers. It is so strong, it can freaking hover. <laughs> I asked Arctic to send over fans, and they send over a special needs dog. Now before you think Arctic just revolutionized the pricing of drones, uh, it's not that simple. Although one hovers, if you connect four of them, or two, or no matter how many actually, they have all less. It's a vacuum cleaner! No, those sucker- Ugh! Oh, no, they can hover slightly, but they will never fly. But before you think I, I pussied out on this one, we took two of them and we cut them out of the frame using a soldering iron with like a, a knife in the front. And I was very delicate with this, creating this little sucker. No, still, it doesn't fly. The weight of the, or the difference in weight without the frame does not allow it to fly. It just allows it to be used as a deadly fucking weapon. 
if I put my, if I touch this, my finger is gone. Look, it can and can move, but it will not it will not fly. After which I thought, okay, maybe the the wings are just not big enough. I ripped apart a random ass Intertech uh, fan that I found, and I uh, also ripped out the magnet of the of the of the wing portion. And then I did the stupidest thing ever by pressing those two one into each other. Oh my god, am I doing it again? And then I, the idea here was that by enlarging the wingspan, maybe it will be able to, you know, it was the stupidest thing ever. Don't kill me. Yeah, you see, nothing happens. It, it doesn't fly, it just becomes a very dangerous weapon. Even with this, forget about it. It didn't fly, it, or it doesn't fly, it just creates a weapon and it's very, very dangerous. Please don't do this. I think this was my endeavor with these little suckers. So yeah, if you need to use them, they are sturdy, sturdy AF, and you saw what I did to them and none of the fans died. It's just my uh, controllers that died. Uh, so if you're looking for a very affordable and unbreakable server fan, great. Uh, if, you are, you, if you have a PC in your room, don't touch these. These are not for you. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, at this point a huge thank you to Arctic for sending over an army <laughs> and for the fun we had with them. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at what we did to my editing rig where we water cooled the crap out of it and it took a lot longer than we initially expected. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. I hope you didn't think that I would end this video without doing this. This is mildly disappointing. Maybe a whole one was just too much. Kind of disappointing.